What's up guys, the tech spot here and this video I'm going to be showing you guys however many things to change and basically first things to do when you get a new MacBook Pro or if this is your first Mac, a bunch of settings that you guys need to change to overall get the best experience on your Mac because I realized when I got my 16 inch MacBook Pro, I changed so many settings to make it just the way I want it to be to personalize it and again, just get the overall best experience on my Mac. This is especially useful for those of you guys who are coming from PC and I will also be showing you guys some tips and tricks that you probably did not know about if you are a regular Mac user. Change these settings and it will make your life on your computing experience so much better on your Mac. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so here we are, and I'm still dumbfounded that the microphone I'm using is in my MacBook Pro. Wait, 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 wait. Do you hear that audio? It's coming straight from the 16-inch MacBook Pro. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. And yeah, I'm not using my Blue Yeti microphone. I'm actually using a built-in microphone on the MacBook Pro. So it sounds pretty good. So anyways, if you want this wallpaper that I kind of put together myself, I'll link it down below in the description. So go ahead and download it for yourself too. I think this looks really cool. It's got like some realistic and animated look to it. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump right on into this video. So the first thing that you want to do when you get a Mac is first open up the system preferences. And it's the first thing that I did. So that's how this order is kind of gonna go. I'm gonna head over to trackpad. And over here, if you go to scroll and zoom, you can just go to change if you want to make the page go down when you swipe down or to go up. So I disabled this because I do like for it to go down when I do swipe down and stuff like that. So you can also go ahead and check out all the features of the trackpad over here and turn on or off any one of these. So I like to turn swipe between pages off as well because I always accidentally go back a page and it's super annoying when like zooming in and stuff like that. So I really like to turn this feature off. Now if you go to point to click, I can also change the tracking speed. So I like to put my tracking speed really quick so I could move around my mouse super fast. And I know many people don't like that. They like a little bit slower, but I personally prefer it to be really, really fast. And I also like to enable tap to click so I don't have to really press down that much on my trackpad that much. And yeah, I just like using it a lot. Now, next up, this is a must. On your desktop, you want to go to right click. And if you go down to sort by, you want to click on snap to grid. If you don't do this, everything will look super cluttered. So just show you guys what I mean. If I go to click on none how it is by default yeah i can see i can just put them anywhere like this and it's hard to really align the stuff again so i have to be super precise but if i go to snap to grid let's go back over there so sort by and the snap to grid yeah i can see now it actually snaps into place and it keeps everything a lot more organized on your desktop now another thing is if you go back over here and right click on your desktop go to show view options and it could change the icon size and everything like that but i personally like to keep it as default but if you do want to change it you can do that and you can also put the label position on the right or left so I, this actually does look a lot cleaner when it's on the right, but I personally prefer having it on the bottom. It can also show more item info, like how many items are in it. So you can see now it shows 344 items, but I like to keep that unchecked. Just keep it a little bit more clean. Now, going to the dock. Now, by default, if I go to right-click right here, you can see it says minimize using Genie Effect. That's what it's set to default. So if I go and open up a web browser, let's say, and if I go and go to minimize, you can see it has that Genie Effect. Now, it is nice and cool looking, but it does slow down your computer. Computer. I mean, it doesn't really slow it down, but it's just slower. Just look at this. It's pretty slow. So what I like to do, instead of having that genie effect, I like to right click over here, go to minimize using and the scale effect. And this makes your computer feel so much faster. Look at that. Boom, boom, boom. So I like using the scale effect so much more on my MacBook. I can get things done so much quicker because I do minimize a lot. Now, again, going back over here, right clicking right there, you got to go to dock preferences. And over here, you want to look over here where it says double click a Windows title bar too. And it's usually set to zoom. So I like to set it to minimize minimize so this is really cool now let me go back open to my web browser now if i want to minimize it you just have to go all the way to the top left and then minimize it from there but with this option enabled i could simply just go ahead and click double click anywhere on the top of any page i could just go ahead and double click right here and it will minimize the page look at that so I don't have to go all the way to the top left. I can just go anywhere at the top over here, double click and boom, it will minimize. It helps me out so much. So again, that's over here, double click eWindows title bar two, and I selected minimize. Now also I like to keep this option on right here, minimize windows into the application icon. Again, this keeps everything so much more organized. So usually by default on Mac, if you have this unchecked, that's how it is by default. 
I could go open up this window. But now if I go to minimize it, it goes all the way to the right. And to me, that's pretty annoying. I wanted to go back into my actual app icon right there. So to do that, you just gotta check this right there. And now if I go ahead and minimize it, using that method or anything, it goes back over here. So it keeps everything so much more and get organized. There's less stuff in your dock, less clutter. So yeah, that's for the dock and that's what I do next. So you can also change the size of it. So I just go ahead and hold right there, change the size of your dock. And by the way, I like to uncheck show recent applications in dock because I don't like having those applications there. So for example, let's open up some applications. All right, so you guys can see, clean my Mac X. If I go and click out, of, click out of it or quit out of it, it's now gonna show there. And I just find that annoying, but I can see that it could be useful for some people, but I personally just like the apps. I want my dock to be pinned to be the only apps that are there. So I like to keep this unchecked. Next is up here in my status bar. So over here at the top, first I like to go to my battery and I like to show my battery percentage. Usually it's like this, but I like to look know exactly what battery percentage I'm at. So I'm exactly at 82%. So I can see if I'm at 5%, exactly when I need to put my laptop on charge. So I like to keep battery percentage on. And then over here, you can also go to energy saver preferences where you can go ahead and set this to never if you do never want your MacBook to, to like turn off when you're not using it. I mean, you're still using it, but you're, let's say you're downloading something, a big file, okay? And you don't want your Mac to just shut down after it sees that you're not really inputting any keyboard clicks or anything like that. So it kind of just puts your laptop to sleep and then it messes up your download. So I like to put this at never for battery. And I also like to put it for power adapters. So that's just me. But if you're downloading a large file, then this really comes into handy. And I like that a lot. Now, if I go back over here to the status bar, you can go and click there and click on open date and time preferences. And over here, you can go ahead and show date and time in menu bar if you want to do that. And it can show even an analog version. So that's like a little clock, but I like the digital version. And you can also use a 24 hour clock if you like to work that way. And this is what I like to check, show day of the week. I always like to see what day of the week it is. You can even show date right there. So you can see exactly what day it is. I'm gonna keep that on because that's super useful. It's exactly January 23rd. Or I can just look at the bottom right there. So if you have this calendar at the bottom right there, you don't really need that. So I'm gonna go and turn that off. Now, another must have thing is called Better Snap Tool or something similar to this. So, you know, on Mac, if you go and open up a window, let's say it opens up like this. You guys probably do the whole thing where you first move it over like this and then you align it and you have to just drag the bottom over and make it perfect like that. So that could get super tedious and super annoying. With better snap tool, here's what it looks like. So let's have the same window again. Now, if I wanna make it full screen, I could just do this, boom, look at that. And also if I wanna just use multiple applications at one time and have them kind of split up, I could do the same thing. This like on Windows and so you just bring it to the side, boom, let's say I want Spotify, so I'm going to open Spotify. So I'm just going to move that over there and boom. You can also move to the top right corner over here. Just make it like that. And I can move this even to the bottom right and make it like that. And I can make it back to full screen. It's just super easy. I love this Better Snap Tool program a lot. And it just makes my life so much easier. Next thing I do is back in System Preferences. So go back to System Preferences. You can even spotlight it. And over here, I like to go to Desktop and Screensaver. And for Screensaver, I like to set it to Never. I don't like having the Screensaver. So I like to turn that off by just selecting Never over here on screensaver and another thing is with folders if you go into them you can see they're all over the place kind of like on the desktop where it can just move app icons or just any file over each other and it just gets really cluttered and messy looking so to fix this you can right click on it sort by and you can click on snap to grid or you can sort it by the name and then also you can enable snap to grid as well so now let's go to snap to grid and boom actually that went back i think we do clean up by let's do clean up by name all right, and Snap to Grid is on. Let's go back over here. Yep, Snap to Grid. So you guys can see everything is a lot more organized now, okay? And it just makes so, everything is so much more better, more better. Grammar, hashtag. Now, while we're in the folders, on the left over here is what you work with a lot. So it's nice to be able to change what you want over here. So if you have a folder open, go over to Finder on the top left and then go to Preferences. Once you're there, you can choose what you want to appear over there. So iCloud Drive, all that good stuff. And so yeah, this is the stuff I have enabled on mine. And so yeah, let's say I also want my movies tab there. Boom, now it's over here. And every time you open up your Finder window, if you go to Finder right here on the bottom left, you can have it open up to your desktop or whatever you want. So I like to set it to my desktop. 
It makes everything so much easier. And let's go to advanced over here. You can change these settings right here, but to me, they're kind of insignificant, so I'm not going to go over those. Of course, next is to download all your applications on your Mac and put them in your dock exactly how you want them. So again, just drag and drop. Now, the next thing to do is go back to system preferences, head over to users and groups over here. And once click there, you can go to login items and change which items you want to start up when you start up your Mac. So you guys can see I deleted all of them over here. You can tap on the plus icon if you want to add login items. But I personally like don't like having any other applications opening unless I physically click on them. So I like to delete everything from here. Another thing to do is head over to software updates. And if there are any software updates available, go ahead and update. So you guys can see my Mac is up to date. I'm on Catalina. It's kind of a little bit buggy, but it's getting less and less buggy as I go with the updates. Now, if you have a MacBook with touch bar, you want to head over to view at the top left over here when you're just at over here on the regular page. So go to view and customize touch bar. Once you guys are over here, you can just customize what you want and do not want to appear on your touch bar. So you can have full customizability, which is really, really cool. So you can go ahead and move these around, add them to your touch bar. You can see all I do is bring it to the bottom of my screen, move it around. I can actually see it where it will be placed on my touch bar, which is really, really cool. Another program that I use on my Mac is clean my Mac X so you guys can see I can see exactly how much space I have left over on my MacBook my battery life what's taken up the most battery my RAM and all that good stuff and I'm going to open this up it also allows me to delete applications with an uninstaller so view all 48 applications and this removes everything okay everything associated with the application will get deleted so this is really nice to make sure that you fully delete a program and all of its related files will when you delete it so let's say for example i want to delete this right here because this wasn't really working for me it's going to hit uninstall i can go type in my mac password to make sure i actually want to delete it and boom just like that it cleared up everything associated with that program so i really like this a lot it also has malware removal and all that good stuff so if you want to keep your mac clean and safe from viruses and delete viruses or malware on a computer. This is really, really cool. They did sponsor a previous video, but it's just such a good program that I continued using it and I still do recommend it as I did in that video. Oh, and if you have a new MacBook Pro, you definitely need one of these. This is not sponsored, but it is an adapter for all your adapting needs. So you guys could see over here, I do have a USB Type-C port. I have a micro SD card slot, a regular SD card slot. So if I want to ever transfer my video files over from my camera, which I kind of do, then I could do that. I also got two USB Type-A ports for my regular USB needs. And also my, again, another USB Type-C. So it works just like normal. And also this is how you plug it in. And over here, many of this these adapters don't have this but it's an HDMI port so I still use my HDMI port from time to time so I like to have that all inclusive in this one adapter not sponsored but it is like a matte kind of finish it's kind of weird all right and it matches the space gray color on my MacBook Pro so that is nice I could go ahead and plug it in and now that is what she looks like. Now I do have a few gripes about this adapter. First off, why does it have a freaking LED? I do not like that, okay? I like to keep this plugged in at all times. And even when your MacBook is closed, the LED stays on. So please take that off. Now, another thing is when I do plug in my SD card over there, it kind of sticks out way too much to the point where I think, did I even plug it in? And turns out I do have it plugged in because it does show up on my Mac, but it kind of sticks out too much and it feels like you didn't actually plug it in. And when you try to plug in stuff into the USB ports right here, you kind of have to force it in. So you're not going to break it. It requires some extra pressure. But yeah, overall for the price, it was good. How much did it cost? Well, 40 bucks on Amazon and let me tell you this was a cheaper one okay a cheaper one with all the ports I needed so this one does have HDMI which again many of them I found do not when they do tend to be a little bit cheaper it's worth it and all right guys so I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please be sure to smash that like button and also be sure to get subscribed for tons more content got many more videos coming so be sure to stay tuned for that this adapter is freaking massive but yeah, guys, this is the text bot, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace out.